Now, Indian Space Agency, ISRO and NASA are set to turn a new chapter in space collaboration with the launch of Earth Observation Satellite NASA. The launch is scheduled for liftoff today at 5.40 p.m. local time from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in India's Shriarikota. NASA, short for NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, has been jointly developed by NASA and ISRO. Built at a cost of $1.5 billion, it is the most expensive Earth observation satellite in the world. ISRO's GSLV F-16 will place the satellite in a 734-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit and will observe Earth with a swath of 242 kilometers. The launch of NASA stands out for several reasons. The satellite will scan the entire globe for it 12, every 12 days and is capable for providing detailed images of the Earth's surface in all weather conditions, whether day or night. NASA is powerful enough to capture changes as small as 1 cm in size. Scientists expect the satellite to provide new insights into processes like climate change and to help us better prepare for them. The satellite carries two radar systems, a NASA-provided L-band and an ISRO-supplied S-band synthetic aperture radar. This makes NASA the first ever satellite to observe Earth in two frequencies and according to ISRO, the mission broadens the scope of international data sharing and cooperation building on previous joint efforts such as astronaut collaboration during the Axiom 4 mission. All right, and joining us live on the broadcast is our principal correspondent Siddharth MP from Sri Harikota. Thank you so much for joining us, Siddharth. Of course, let's talk about the significance of this mission first. See, indeed, NISAR is going to capture the Earth in unprecedented clarity or unprecedented resolution. Uh, let me just recall what happened last year in Kerala in India. This very day, there was a tragic landslide in Vainad. And this, of course, is a natural disaster connected to geology itself. So that landslide claimed 400 lives and nobody saw it coming. But mm -hmm. perhaps with a satellite like NISAR, when centimeter level changes on the Earth's surface are detected, it could be possible theoretically to understand very early on when the Earth is moving, when there's trouble brewing somewhere. It could be a possibility that such kind of natural disasters can be detected and perhaps there could be some symptoms or telltale signs of disaster that is slowly building up. So if you know this data can be calibrated, if this data can be interpreted in the right way and if some place land is shifting, it could be a potential earthquake, it could be a volcanic eruption. If there's something happening on the earth, NISAR guaranteed will see it because of its sophisticated imaging capabilities. And almost every week it can image the entire earth and week after week you can compare the imagery from last week with this week and that with next week. So you can do this for at least three or five years. That's what NISAR is going to do. That's what makes this mission so significant. It's more like a complete health monitor for Earth. Every week it scans the entire Earth. All right, absolutely. Uh, you've very aptly demonstrated the practical applications and implications of this as well. Let's also just talk about the two frequencies that it will be operating on as well as the scope of international data sharing and cooperation that this presents. <coughs> Usually, a radar imaging satellite would have uh, one frequency. It operates in one band. It could be an X band or a C band or S band or L band, any one of these frequencies. But it's extremely technically challenging to fuse two frequencies, include two types of frequency bands in a single project. That's what makes NISAR so unique. That's also part of what makes NISAR so expensive. Well over a billion dollars in expenditure. NASA alone having spent more than $1.2 billion. So this is what makes this mission so sophisticated. To talk about Earth imaging, itself. NISAR is going to use radar waves to uh, image the earth, understand uh, vegetation, understand soil, understand so many other technical parameters. So while doing that, if you are estimating forest cover, the L band is a long wave. So it's a long wavelength. So what the L band does is it is a long wave band which can see slightly taller objects in, including treetops and canopies and the you know taller part of vegetation. But the S band is something that can penetrate even further and it can even understand crop growth or you know shrub growth. So this is something that can help scan different layers including the canopies and also the smaller shorter plants so this is going to prove crucial to estimate forest cover be it in forests like the amazon or to mm. even look at uh, crop growth in places like india because based on space data you can predict how your crop growth is going to be for next year so will you get a good yield will you get a sub average yield so you can also plan on that basis on how your harvest would be so this is this is something with immense applications right
All right, Siddharth, thank you so much for bringing us the latest on this. Of course, we will be bringing in more details and we'll join you for more discussions on this as well. Thank you so much for now.